the problem with the traditional view of insulin resistance. The traditional view of insulin resistance is very glucose centric. Um, because we have assigned the hormone insulin to having no more relevance than diabetes, we purely look at it through the lens of glucose. And so most conventional clinical tests that are attempting or speculating on the nature of insulin resistance or prediabetes, which is the same thing, are only looking at the glucose. The problem with that view is that, remember, insulin's most famous job, but not its most important. Insulin does all kinds of important things and many critical things. Insulin's most famous effect is to correct what is a steady increase in insulin, uh, sorry, glucose. So if glucose is going up, insulin will sense this, it will be mobilized, it will come up and then open the doors of cells throughout the body, allowing the glucose to come down, which then uh, allows the insulin to come back down. Uh, but they're not the same thing. Glucose is not insulin. Insulin is not glucose. That seems very obvious. Um, but even still, there's this weird uh, inability to disconnect the two ideas where it's important for you to remember that insulin resistance is a state where insulin is elevated. That says nothing about the glucose. We don't know what the glucose is. In fact, glucose can be normal. And therein lies the rub. That's the problem, right? If we have a glucose-centric paradigm of insulin resistance, it's possible that the individual that we may be moving through the years, getting an annual blood test, and we are measuring our only ever our glucose, and the glucose is staying normal. All the while, insulin is getting higher and higher and higher, working harder and harder in an effort to keep the glucose in check. But it is doing it. And then it's only once the body becomes so resistant to its insulin that even though insulin is still multiples higher than it should be, now the glucose starts to climb and now we detect the problem 10 or even 20 years after the insulin had already been fighting. So insulin is the more sensitive signal. It's the canary in the coal mine, if you will. It gives us the earlier warning. Now, that brings us back to measuring uh, what are the actual tests now that we can uh, measure um, uh, to determine your insulin resistance state. One of them is fasting insulin. Uh, insulin is a marker of insulin resistance. Ideally, that number is less than six in a fasted state. So if you're doing a 12-ish hour fast, you would love for that number to be six microunits per mil. I'm, of course, in the US, so I'm giving US units. You can convert to picomoles as needed. And I believe the conversion would be around 30-ish or, or high 20s, maybe 27 picomole um, for those outside the US. Um, so six microunits per mil. Now, however, what if it's a little higher than that? What if it is up to the mid-teens, for example. So I kind of have this other cutoff, which is a little, you can be a little loose with this. But if someone has a fasted insulin between say seven to 17 or so, that doesn't necessarily mean they're insulin resistant. Now, why do you ask? Um, elevated insulin is a sign of insulin resistance. It's because insulin has a rhythm to it, like so many hormones do. Not all hormones, but many. Insulin will, it will, it'll ebb and it'll flow throughout the day. And it's entirely possible that you get your insulin, your blood drawn at a moment when insulin was starting to climb up a little bit. For example, insulin will climb in the morning and then it may do so again in the mid afternoon, just as a nap, even in a purely fasted state. It's just part of its rhythm. Um, now, that I mentioned that second kind of category. If insulin is six or below, that's a really good sign that you're insulin sensitive. If it's in that intermediate realm, seven to 17, that suggests there's a problem, but not absolute. And then if it's high teens, 18 and above, it's very likely that you are in fact insulin resistant and you've detected a true problem there.